This is massive. Yes. <laughs> Super secret project over there. And just to let you know, it's not gonna be a normal car show. Time to leave Tokyo, head to Abu Dhabi. Idiots on tour. Idiots abroad. <laughs> As he walks into the door. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, Lucas. <laughs> Dubs McGee. She couldn't even get into the airport, never mind Abu Dhabi. <laughs> what's that? Wait, what's the glasses were inside, buddy? You don't want to see what's behind them. Lucas, if you can fit that in there. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> in order to get the jacket in, he has crushed all of his other belongings to pieces. I oh, got it in. That's what she I am said. honestly <laughs> I am mind blown. It's defied physics there. Right? Hopefully my zipper doesn't break. Tokyo to the Middle East, we have landed in Abu Dhabi. And let's uh, do a little recap for everybody who's right, joining us go. to the channel New 24. So we decided to have this really big, elaborate plan. And in order for that plan to pay off, we have to do a ton of stuff around the world before we get back to Ireland and begin building for a big season. We did our partnership with Liberty Walk. We haven't so, said what car it's for, but it's a first of its kind in Europe. It's nice. And then we also got two containers you know, leaving Japan with three cars, a bunch of other stuff, but we can't say what that is either. But we had a lot of fun in Japan also. We're now here in Abu Dhabi because two years ago, I bought some engines, which I didn't ship because there was communication errors. We said, we come here on the way back, we'll drop in, we'll see the car culture in the Middle East. It's a while since we've been here. I haven't been here in a minute. Yeah, so we're gonna check it out over the next couple of days. We're gonna go check out the engines first because they're gonna be shipped back to Ireland as well. And all part of the plan. We're a very unique place. We're actually in the Royal Compound where they have a ton of stuff here. AKA La La Land. Yep, yeah, and we're gonna go check out what madness they have around the place as well. So join us on a Middle East adventure where we get some engines, see some stuff, and always look at some cars. Let's go. I heard man when I chat and chit I come through like what's good, these weeks hit a split Man better breeze and sprint It's long if I choose to bite down on these pricks X is a lyrical 4-4 four, four and it is So make sure it's X that you want to rally with so This is Lunatics by Nature HQ So we've been here before But every time we come here there's something cool here So let's see what they got Bars and flows, check out their mix shot Told them man can't handle the fixed part It's all fun and games to the person saying It's all fun and games, get beat up and cocked out the picture Must be yacked if you think you can wake me I'll tell my man put down the link car We have a Nissan Patrol, surprise, surprise. This one is like an, like an army green repaint. So you guys will know this car, very famous. It's one of the cars that was made for the film, gone in 60 seconds, but this is a full on road street car. Absolutely gorgeous. One of my favorite cars in the whole world. The interior is brand new. There's the go baby go button. I think this one has nitrous as well, yeah. So this is just absolutely gorgeous. Back in that Middle East buzz straight away when you're like, whoa, everything is nice. Lucas. Damn. So this is the same engine that is in. For rotor. Yeah, Mad Mike's RX-7. So this is built by the same company. And this is a four rotor twin turbo with a very exceptional, uh, ignorant exhaust system coming out. The, the exhausts are absolutely fantastic. And I'm like, these are the afterburner style that um, I think you should get something similar to the Corvette. You think I should get something like that on the back of the Corvette? That's like a fighter jet. Yeah, me and Ryan were talking about it. It'd be cool to do like an afterburner style exhaust at the back of the Corvette. So that's quite inspirational. It has a sequential in it as well by the looks of it. We've got a beautiful Mark IV Supra with a 2J sat in there. Another project, Pontiac Trans Am. A lot of boogies. This thing, I've been in this thing uh, on the desert. It's the most, it's a thousand horsepower sand rail. So it weighs like, 600 kilos, 650 kilos, and it's a thousand horsepower. And you've got like a, what do you call it, like helicopter communication inside. Yeah. It's so cool. Fun fact about this one, T-Pain was riding in it and he got flipped. And he was kind of like hanging in there while the car was upside down and shit. I went in the middle of the night, pitch black in this at about 150,000 miles an hour through the desert. I couldn't see anything, but Khalifa was driving, so he knew where he was going, but it was terrifying. <laughs> Look, 
I've never seen this before here. That's gangster. That is unbelievable. Is that airbags? Yeah, so it's a Ford F-150 old school, I'd say probably like late 60s, early 70s, somewhere around that. So these two are restored from, they're actually found in the desert, completely abandoned yeah. for 25, 30 years, and they restored them in-house. You'll see what it looked like when they found it. Completely abandoned, just left to rot. But it doesn't really rot here because there's not that much rain. But they built it back to the original specification. So when, before Abu Dhabi and Dubai was all developed like it is now, the Sheikh used to drive around in the desert in these. This is what they used off-road. There wasn't even roads at the time. So when they found them, they were like, oh my God, this is such a historically significant uh, Land Rover, these two. So they restored them. So they're absolutely perfect. Brand new, zero miles on them since the restor restoration as well. This is just brand new in there. Just a brand new I put my in there 70s. Anyway. I think I'm probably get it dirty. Yeah, you should never put your butt anywhere. New Bronco. I haven't seen one of those here before. So it's a new oh, Bronco Raptor. That is amazing. I really want that. That's pretty pretty good. Oh, Lucas. Oh. This is the front end of a G35 looks like. You wouldn't know because you had an S14 yeah. and then you crashed that and it was no fun. But this is what they actually look like. That actually looks terrible. <laughs> It doesn't look great. That's why they changed it on yours. And then we got like, these are all practice drift cars for them. Some jet skis. This is a full carbon jet ski. Pretty gnarly. I, I, I love riding in these. They're, you can do like flips and stuff. It's awesome. You can do flips? Yeah. No, nah, I can't do a flip. But I, can, <laughs> but I can jump. I can make a jump. This is Khalifa's pro drift car. You guys who have watched our content for years will know this car. If you're new, you probably won't know this car. So this is eight liter V8. Uh, this makes 800 and 50 horsepower NA, and it is a just a, it's a beast. It's a beast. It's just a beast. Full so this is like uh, yeah, just as good as it gets when it comes to drift cars. So this is what he competes in, um, and it's he's crashed a few times. They build it back up again a few times. It's obviously got the boss kit, which I know people are divided on, but for here it kind of suits the aesthetic, the dark black, the big noise, all that stuff it goes really well. I think if you're going to do a boss kit front S14. You've got to put a V8 in it. That's just how that works to make it like a Japanese JDM muscle American. car. So that's like all the bunch of random stuff in here, but uh, this is not why we're here. We're here to grab some engines. So across the yard, that's where they are. One of those Eleanor Mustangs is for sale in the UAE. 395,000 euro for one of those. Okay. Yikes. Oh my God. Oh. Oh. All right, so we are here, and here are the engines that I purchased two years ago. Just to let you guys know, we'll, we'll have a look at these later. They're gonna be moved to a different place, up to our friend Sultan's place to be shipped out back to Ireland. This is a fully dressed 1JZ, which I'm presuming at the time I had some plan for a project for, but I ended up probably selling that car. You saying earlier that when, when you got this, we didn't have a 1JZ car. No, and now we have lots of 1JZ cars. This is the spare 1JZ for us. Full engine, fully dressed, everything. That's not the most exciting part. This is the most exciting part because this is a T6060, which I was going to put into my Ford Mustang, which is now also sold, so I don't know what we're going to do with that. But this is going in the Corvette. So this is a mass motorsport built V8. This is an LS3 derived seven liter. So my Corvette has about 550 horsepower from a 6.3 liter naturally aspirated LS3, which is a built LS3. This is essentially a stroked LS3, which makes it a seven liter, which means that this will rev to about 9,000 RPM and it'll make 750 horsepower NA. Yeah. So this is a hugely high revving. This is the same engine that Christoph Blues ran in Formula Drift in his Eurofighter. So we all know how fast that car was. So we got it at a super good price two years ago, but we just never got it out of here. So today- Before COVID prices. Before COVID, right? So it's been here since before COVID. So we're now obviously on our mission back from Tokyo, landing in Abu Dhabi, just to make sure these engines get delivered. And they're gonna be sent to Ireland for whatever purposes. So this is probably gonna be a spare engine for our Verosa drift car, drift taxi. And also I have another car that I bought that no one knows about yet that has a 1JZ in it. So we'll get to that one. So yeah, the boys are loading them up on the truck now and these are gonna be brought from Abu Dhabi up to Sharjah to Sultan's workshop where we can have a little deeper look into them and also check out his car collection later on. So, and now they're gonna be making their way back to Ireland to make a lot of noise in our cars over the rest of the year. Just to get this straight, we've just put the engines on a truck to a person that we don't know, and he's just drove off and yep. everything's gonna be fine. Yep, that's kind of what happened there. 
So he doesn't know where he's going, but he knows the, the certain, the kind of rough area, which means we have to send him a location on the way. I don't Hopefully he doesn't drive off the engines because they're pretty pricey. Our, our lives are in his hands. <laughs> They made it. So we've traveled, what, an hour and a half north to so Abu Dhabi, through Dubai to Sharjah. And our engines are here at store 17, which is our friend Sultan's garage. We're gonna show you some cool stuff that's in here, but it's just nice to see that our engines have made it. And then from here, they will be shipped to Ireland. So we're gonna unload the engines and give you guys a little tour around here as well. This place is incredible. The last place we went to only had space for about five or six cars, but this is massive. So, super secret project over there. We don't even know what it is. No. Apparently, that's going to be the star of European car shows this year, but we don't know what it is. People have uh, teased it to us, but they haven't told us what it is. No, we know there's a couple of big people involved in that one. We've got 911 chassis. This is what inspired me to buy my one, because he rocked up to a car show in this. It's kind of like rough around the edges. Um, and I was like, oh, I'd love one of them. So we ended up getting one. So it's very similar to mine. Got a little Corolla. I've seen this a long time ago when I saw it. On the Eclipse, the really nice car, actually. I love this. This is a streetcar sequential LS. We got the wall of drift cars. That's fire. The candy ones. Yeah, the candy IS200 LS. S15, full carbon, also LS. Bentley Continental. He never really did anything with the Bentley, did he? Yeah, and uh, Jimmy Oaks were here last year. He did some skids, and then that's the last I saw of it. And, uh, <laughs> Must be nice, dry carbon. Well, it's, it's actually a Bentley Continental that weighs less than the S15. Which a Bentley Continental is about twice the size of, of an S15. Yeah, so, oh my God, that weighs nothing. <laughs> that's cool. LS on ITVs. So light, it's ridiculous. And Bentley's are pretty heavy. This is a, like a missile car but it's actually a 3.2 Evo M3. Middle East missile. But it's an RC F with another LS in there. The thing I like about this, they had a problem with clearance issues on the bonnet, so they just decided to slam it down and let gravity take its course. This car was actually built in Ireland by Darren McNamara. Proper, fast, rotary, sort of drift car, BN kitted FC. race car stuff. We've got a very clean Civic just randomly here as well. It looks like an SIR. This is a full carbon. Isn't it? Yeah, full carbon race car. And then my favorite of Sultan's cars, which is the V8 powered Aston Martin Vantage. It's running full Mark IV suspension on the front. This thing has everything custom and it is full uh, crushed, crushed carbon the whole way through, forged carbon, whatever you want to say it. Um, it's like the one we saw in Japan, the same body kit, like you said. Same body kit as the one we saw in Japan, except he made it into a drift car, which and is absolutely wild. Remolded it with crushed carbon. And this car has been, you know, all around the world. It's competed in lots of different championships. And it still looks absolutely fantastic. I'm going to show you guys. It's, it's almost counted as mid-engined, isn't it? Yeah, it's back a long it's, way. It's pretty. Like, the center of the wheel's there whole engine. The intake starts behind. the center of the wheel. I think that's pretty much where it starts in the actual Vantage as well. It's an aluminium chassis, so it's tricky to work on. You can't weld to it, you gotta bolt everything to it, including the cage. Look at the turbos, it's like just like yeah, twin turbo. positioning on there. It's a really cool position, yeah? Yeah. It's very cool. This car is one of my favorite drift builds of all time. So Sultan, he's not here, he's out of the country at the minute. Obviously we have permission to be here. We're not just poking around and everything. But uh, a lot of the stuff he does is very not quintessential Middle East. He likes building cool cars and he is very much influenced by Japan, America, Europe, that kind of stuff. So the builds are very much on that kind of thing. Good to see you. You good? Hi guys. Hey. <laughs> this is one of the fun builds he's doing for this year, which is a four-door drift taxi Panamera with a V8. With the V8, obviously. This is all standard, then it looks like he's probably made these arms because yeah. I doubt they'd make a Panamera kit. So this is definitely the first Panamera with a full angle kit on it ever. 
Yeah, it's definitely a drift taxi. I wonder, is it much, is, is it much bigger than our Verosa? It's probably longer wheelbase, I'd say. Yeah. Similar size. Let's go upstairs and see what's upstairs. It's gonna leave the boys to struggle with the engines here. Yeah. Big ass en engine crane there. Not sure. It's like for a truck engine. What is this? We actually don't know what this is. We haven't been told. It's definitely a supercar of some sort, but and it's going to be a drift car. I don't know what it is. Have a guess in the comments because we've had our own guesses. Yeah, I think it's McDonald's. 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 Wow, this is a police car. Holy I've been in the back crumb. of those for a few times. <laughs> Yeah, there's a, there's a lot more cars here. Christ, this place is massive. That is unbelievable. Oh, G-Wagon. V8 powered, Aristo or GS300. We have a PS13 over there. We've got a Eurofighter here. Oh, that's cool. He's sat and blacked it now. Oh, here we go, here Lucas, we go. G35. Oh, that's a two-door, gross. <laughs> They're all gross. That's just the way they are. CLK63. This is another AMG. Wait, dude. Oh, it's locked. Wait. Oh, it's, it has the whole frame in the back. I've been in the knees. Look how excited he is about that. The back. Look inside. I, I doubt they'd make it that easy to get into. A few birthdays worth spending here. <laughs> can you imagine stealing one of these? It doesn't look right in being in the front one. But the no, back. No. Feel, feels back, strange. The back I can get on board with. The front, definitely not. This is the best part. You just walk around sometimes and you go, is that a project? Is he storing it for somebody else? Is this gonna have a mad plan or is it just abandoned or I guess our place is a bit like this too except for the amount of cars oh, they meant to buy. There's a bit of a difference. <laughs> He's definitely build a skate park here and still leave the cars in. It's like this is a huge spot this is probably twice the size of our place just upstairs. It's very cool very random love it. Having a little bit of trouble getting the engines off, it seems. <laughs> okay, so our engines are now in store 17, Sultan's place, and they're going to be packaged up and sent to Ireland. Both engines have a purpose when they get back, but it was really important that we got them shipped soon because we got a big season coming and we need those two engines in two cars. So now we're gonna head on. We don't know what's up next. We got some car stuff lined up, Lucas. Yeah. Middle East style. Join us <laughs> for <laughs> that <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Every time. Try and do an outro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you laugh. Oh, you laugh. Don't you get involved. <laughs> don't encourage him. up on the 20th. We start the 20th. Yeah. Look at this training camp. Let's go. Boot camp. How are we feeling? Pretty f***ing swell. <laughs> so G, get into the Middle Eastern vibes. Salam alaikum brothers and sisters. Mashallah. Let's go to a cool car show somewhere in Dubai, I think. I don't know what's going on. That man knows what's going on. Salam alaikum alaikum salam habibi. So 
So today we are at the Flat 12 Grand Picnic, which is one of the biggest car shows in the UAE. I've never been here before, the boys have never been here before. Our friend Dan from carculture.ae helps out with the show, so he's hooked us up with some passes. We're gonna go check out some cars. And just to let you know, it's not gonna be a normal car show. We have a bit of a party pooping sign here. Revan, don't be messing, lads. <laughs> of all the cars here, that's the one you picked to rev. All right, guys, just before we check out the car show, I want to remind you guys that on the driftgames.life shop right now, we have slashed everything to below cost price. We're clearing everything out. There's limited stock available, so if you go over to the shop now, you're going to get a hoodie, t-shirt, sticker, a lanyard, hat for less than you'll ever get it, ever, on Drift Games. So you want yourself a little present for yourself or for someone else. Now is the time to grab it while stocks last. Check it out, driftgames.life. We're also at the uh, part of the trip where we're kind of falling apart. I have a migraine or headache or whatever I have. You have um, her well, hand punching the punching machine in the arcade last night. Do you want to, uh, do you want to show you a belt? I'm not going to say I forgot my belt, but I forgot my belt. And I forgot that I was wearing shorts because it's warm. So what I've done is like every good car modifier, I've been ingenious about it. I've used the iPhone cable from the car to tie up my pants. And no one here knows that I look like a tramp. And Luke, Luke's is fine. I'm fine. I'm perfect. I'm ready to go, boys. Let's go, boys. He is so enthusiastic on camera versus off. <laughs> kind of gone to too extreme of car coaches, I would say. My brain can't take, this is too, ra such a random mix of stuff. This GTR though, well it's not even a GTR, I, I imagine this would be a GTST. Right next to a Carrera GT. This is a strange one, because it's got the wide body, no it is a GTR, but strangely they've cut the bonnet. So they have a GTST, like bonnet cut maybe, but the rest of it's GTR, seats are GTR. GTR, but strange how they had to they cut the bonnet. Maybe they got an aftermarket bonnet for it or something. It's weird, but it's very nice. Like that stance is unbelievable. The design of this almost looks like with the window line. The back could be the front, and the front could be the back. Exactly. That's actually a good point. I never thought about that because the back is so like sh sharp, while this is so mellow. The back seats is the best part. They're so spacious. It's like a bed in there. The front's a bench as well. E -o, e -o, e -o. Yeah. Honestly, I think this is the biggest variety of a car show I've ever seen. And Dave, I think from what you've said from this trip, this is actually your dream two-car garage. This is this is the two cars that I would love to have if I had that I don't own. Is a Ken Mary and an AMG GT. They're the two. I think they just like the proportions, how cool they look. Probably lower the back of the Ken Mary a little bit more than that. But other than that. It looks incredible. Like, we got our boy Sam's NSX, which we featured the Yonks ago. That thing is unbelievable. Oh, look at this Corolla. Sure, that's mint or dent. You'd see in Ireland. She's pure mint, lad. The pockets are clean. I'd say out here, though, the rust is a little bit easier to manage because there's no rain ever. <laughs> All the cars around, and the lads just love a little scooter. It's a Moto Campo. So, Josh, did you know that they used to come in the back of a Honda Civic? That was, they came with them. So, like, you had a little car, and then you took out your little bike to go from your little car. It all folds into a little thing you put in the boot. That folds into it. Motor never, I've never seen one of those before. Drive the car and then to a car park, then you take your little scooter to the rest of the journey. It's cool, right? That's incredibly cool. I like that. Beautiful 180, well, 240 SX. Stuff everywhere here. This is like the most expensive piece of grass in the world right now. off-road can it be? It's pretty off-road. Like it's jacked up, four-wheel drive, all mudguard stuff underneath, roof rack, pretty cool. We never claim to be supercar people, but there's absolutely no way you're gonna get any knowledge in this car from me, but it's really cool. Maybe that's all the knowledge that you need for this. That is outrageous. That is some aero now, if I've ever seen any aero in my life. That is pretty, pretty ridiculous. 
that is gorgeous. It's about to have a crisis. A guy with. He has his car kept in the exact condition that Josh keeps his in. <laughs> I see it. Oh, where is it? This is how your car looks coming to work every day, Josh. Did you see anything? He's actually done a good job of copying your style. I think there's a competition for Dia's car between me and Lucas. It'd be, well, wow. there, there's no winners, there's only losers. Yeah. Since I like, start working, I haven't washed them once yet. Yeah, we know. We found the perfect car for our new road trip car. Because now I could go everywhere without you and Lucas annoying me. I'd just be on my own and I wouldn't have, you wouldn't even be having an excuse to not be in the car. I hate to break it to you. I think one of the things comes off, we can, we can come with you. Oh, they figured it out. <laughs> Scratch that idea. <laughs> so you have to. Hello, 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 Andy. All doing good? Looking I'm, good, I'm, buddy. I'm, 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 all right, so we're catching up with our boy, hey, Mr. Hey, Ahmed Dham. Up, so, up, you know, a lot of people don't know this, that uh, I think it was nearly 10 years ago, the first event I ever ran in the Middle East was your first time yes, ever twin yes, drifting. Yes, and it was the first time, I think, you guys hear the anti-lag, the anti-lag. Yes. yes. I don't, I'd never heard anti-lag quite like it before. <laughs> I mean, you're here with a couple of your cars. Yeah, these are um, the, the RCF. Everyone knows this from Goodwood. The S14 that I use for competition in OIDC. And the S15, we're taking spare with us to OIDC. Because, you know, a man will happen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's, 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 I think it's, the one we, we like the most is this one because we I've never seen another RCF. This one, yeah, this, 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 is a, this is a thick one. Full and carbon kids Kevlar. Kids like it. Everybody likes it. And I, the last time you guys visited me was when the workshop When your workshop flooded. flooded. Yeah. You guys should come visit the new workshop then. Is it Debbie? It's not as flooded? No, it's not as flooded. <laughs> The signs are all pointing in a direction, Josh. Another one. You'd be surprised at how hard these are to find and how expensive they are. They're about 20 to 25 grand. I don't know. I don't see the, I don't see the value. It's quite small. So if you get the, this and then the kit, you're probably 50 grand deep into a project. Look, guys, I'm just going to say it right out now. If the videos go really well this year and we grow massively, we might think about investing in one of these for Josh. And we would love to build a little F40 for Josh. Yo, Scooby-Doo. Scooby-Doobs. Scoops. Sentimental value right here, just Who's the guy that looks like that he, you know, the orange hair kid? Shaggy. That's the <laughs> Shaggy, bro. That's sick. Even out here in the Middle East, everybody knows what's up. Full range of Link ECU products. All the plug and plays, all the aftermarket ECUs, keeping some of the craziest cars. Some cars out here running 1,500 to 1,800 horsepower in Nissan controls, all on Link ECU. We obviously use them in all of our street builds, all of our drift builds, and they're a huge supporter of the channel. So make sure you check out linkecu.com. They might have a plug and play for your car, or you can go standalone ECU. I guarantee you won't look back. You're going to get all the potential out of your car that you don't even know you have for the best in the business. We're going to need a lot of these next year. We're this year, need, this we're year. We're going to need a little bit of this, 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 and then we're going to need all of it. We're going to need all of it. So we are going to head off from the show, go get some dinner, and we picked up some cool merch from the boys at Car Culture. Always really cool designs keeping us fresh because we're going to need it because we sweated through the drift game slowing today which remember is 75% off on the shop they're not the sweaty ones that we're selling we're not selling our t-shirts we're selling brand new in the packaging yeah. t-shirts obviously anyway this show is absolutely mind-blowing and just an amazing little drop off on our journey back home look at this place sun shining GTR is everywhere it's good people great culture but I'm hungry Stopped into what's it driven by Porsche? Got something there. Driven by Porsche. It's, uh, driven is the name of it's like a restaurant. I think they have three of them, maybe two of them. I can't remember. One in Abu Dhabi, one in Dubai. It's like a car themed restaurant. It's quite cool. You just eat it and just the car. Porsche is there. And then you look out the window at opulent amounts of wealth that things you can't afford. I'm gonna leave the camera sat down here. I'm gonna see how many uh, for a minute and see how many cars actually drive past. By the way, if you come here, the food is great. Approved by Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> All right, edit done. Let's go. All right, so we are somewhere randomly in Dubai. But a time has passed because I went and had a meeting with, actually with the government, but that's for another day. Big things coming, hopefully, in the future for drifting, not just for drift games in general. Anyway, we're here. Ahmed Ham said, if you guys have a couple of hours, you gotta come check out the new place. He apparently has a ton of cars in here. We've never seen it before. So we're gonna go through a door and do what we usually do and go, whoa. 
or there might be no cars in here. So, yeah, we don't know. No water on the ground. That's a, that's a big improvement. Just in case I had my Crocs. What's up, brother? Good evening. How, good? How, how's it doing? All good. This place is nice. Different, huh? <laughs> you got a lot more car. You got a lot of cars since I saw you last. You've been left alone so with the market. <laughs> on the auctions. Da, da, da. <laughs> Sometimes I like people like this. They make me feel like I don't have as much of a problem. We took a new space. This is cool. I like this container yeah, thing. Yeah, this is the uh, three containers welded to each other. To make like an office and upstairs, yeah. But so we, so we saw these cars at the the grand picnic. Yep. To these yep. So we're going we're going to do what we never do: is just stand away from the drift cars because everything else here exactly. looks <laughs> very interesting. So you got an R34 GTS. This is a GTS. We're doing it to an R30 uh, GTR, but to a uh, rear drive. It's going to be around 1,000, 1,000, yeah. RB26. RB26. Nice. Oh, she's there. I mean, it's, it's this almost is brand new. Mint, mint. Is this original or being? It's original. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so she was it's a very mint car. Yeah, they're rare what to find. Are, are so you've bought all these cars since I've seen you last, kind of. Yes. Blue S15, yes. original blue. Yes. Is it, is it an Arctic? Yes. So she's one an of 1,500. Wow. Oh my God. It even smells new. Man. <laughs> this is a brand new car. It's a brand new car. I have never seen an S15 interior this clean. Wow, it's crazy. Oh. Even the engine, uh, nothing touched, nothing. This is a it's rare car. Yeah. Like just very rare, very rare. Especially the color, I love the color. They are so cool they're because so they're fun. like a... And they're so fun to drive, huh? They're like somewhere between the normal NA and the turbo, exactly. but... Which, by the way, they're as fast as a SR20 turbo, you know? It's really? Like, yeah, from zero to 100, because it has a closer gear ratio. Okay. It has cams, high compression. And then the SR20 turbo just yeah, goes exactly. and yeah. leaves yeah. it. And then, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this... Man, this is I, I mean, we, you know, we come oh. from Ireland, there's a lot of crawlers. Forget, and no, 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 forget the exterior. Yes. <laughs> That's why I'm telling you, this is a. It looks so tiny. <laughs> it looks so tiny. Man, that's unbelievably clean. This is a, this is a showpiece. This is a showpiece, yeah. Oh, 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 clean. That's like brand new. <laughs> clean, huh? Very clean. <laughs> From an Irish man who had seen, yeah, I know, seen I know. about 5,000 of these, this is one of the cleanest I've seen. Uh, look at when you bought it, was it like rough or was yes, it okay? Yes. It was rough. It had rust at the engine bay, at the chassis, yeah, we did everything. And I've been after it since 2017. Every year I, I call the guy, do you want to sell it? No, do you want to sell it? No, do you want to sell it? 2020, Corona, everyone wants to sell it. <laughs> yeah, <you're laughs> I call the guy, do you want to sell it? Of course. Bring, it, bring, <laughs> yeah. bring them to me. <laughs> bring them to me. <laughs> and you've got a GT3? Yes, this one I got two weeks ago. So we drove one for like a whole weekend in the UK. They are so fast. They're not about fast. So mechanical, so analog. Yeah, it is. And I've driven the 2022 one, the 992s, 991s. When I drove this one, it's, 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 it's totally different. It's like a race car. Yeah, with plates. Oh, such good condition. Oh, wow, this is beautiful. <laughs> then you got a F80. Everybody who drives an M3 eventually <laughs> jumps to a GT3. That's, that's actually how it works. That's actually yeah. how it works. Yeah. Those M3 or M car. Believe it or not, I saw on Instagram a reel, someone saying that, and that just clicked in my mind. Okay, yeah. I need to get one. Mm, that's how it goes. Well, I need see, to get what one. What usual people do is they sell this to buy this, but you luckily I, have I, both. I, yeah. And then you have an Evo 5. This is an Evo 6, six RS2. Six. This, is, this is actually my car from 2002. From 2002? From university. I used to go to this university. <laughs> you used to go to university? Yeah, I was 58. We have that in common. I used to have an Evo in university. Oh, really? They weren't wor worth what they're worth now. Yeah, so it's exactly, fine. I know. Then, that sounds like, if you're younger, <laughs> drifting yeah, if you're younger than 30 years of age, that sounds like a massive flex. Yeah, I know. But these were like 5,000 euro back nobody, then. Nobody wanted them. Nobody wanted them because this they one has 58,000 kilometers on the... 58,000 right? kilometers? Because I finished university. I forgot the car for like 10 years. <laughs> it was downstairs and then I just got it back. So it took me nine years to finish university. Yeah, yeah. this no, is, this is stock, 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 stock. Oh, it's clean it's as well. Stock. Very clean. So we fully restored the car. And it's tough to get parts and these rust so terribly bad. Yeah, yeah. So if you guys aren't aware, around this time Mitsubishi decided that under seal was just not necessary. <laughs> they were like, no one's going to want this car no, in five years car, time. I know, I know. And then you have a Golf GTI. Oh, no. <laughs> It gives me just memories from uh, school, because I had one in school when I was 13 years old. <laughs> so, 13? 13. 
<laughs> yes, one three. This is his education period. Exactly. Yeah, this, this is my education like, period. Yeah, high school, <laughs> school, college. high school, university. Should have grown up. And then, <laughs> and then it all went downhill over there. But this also is a very rare car to find, by the way. I this is a you. the last model of uh, MK2. This is a 1992. 92. 92. So this is the last one that made like 2,000 in the world for them. Wow. But this, the Evo and the Corolla, uh, even the 15. Like these are like. Gran Turismo swipes. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like it's like original cars. Like I was about to say that. Somebody told me you are uh, living the Gran Turismo dream. Yeah, like just, like, swipe, like swipe, swipe up there. Yeah. Oh, 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 like, whoa! This is one of our, our employees. That is it's nice, huh? That's, That's very so nice. nice. That's Mint. like one of the nicest yeah, JZX yeah, lady ones I've ever seen. It's actually a Cressida. It's actually a Cressida. Because it's left hand, right? Left hand drive makes it a crest. Yeah. I thought I was, I was getting there with the four door Toyotas, and then they keep throwing new ones in there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Little, That's a lovely it's car. Almost 600, 650 horsepower. So it's proper go with the show. Ooh. See, everything is so. God, this is a beautiful car. This is a new car. Mm hmm. <laughs> you know, for once, for once, I know what it is. What is it, Josh? A is that a. Not an MX5. Are you going to, Jay? B58, he's going with the new school. I like it. Yep. You're an experienced person. Do you think the B58 is the new yes, 2J? That is. You're happy to say. I'm happy. The power, man, even the power level is better. The graph, the, the everything, the, the, the response, the torque. It's, and you can buy them because it's reliable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like very you. reliable. All right, so we got, took a little stop here at Ahmed Ham. Super proud of how far he's come. I know him 10 years now, and it goes to show hard work pays off. Okay, our two-week adventure has come to an end. We started in Japan, we've got containers on the sea, we've got our engines in the UAE, we had a very important meeting. Now we're heading back to Ireland because while we've been away, the boys back home have been working on version two of our Drift Game Studios. And even though we're a bit sad to be finishing our travels, we're excited to see what they've been up to because we've got some big plans for HQ this year. So now it's time to get on the plane, go home. We hope you guys have enjoyed. Well, who's enjoyed? Lucas, really. Next time you see us, we'll be back in the office and HQ and working on big plans for 24. The mission has been a success. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. More content coming your way soon. Time to go home.